been working in the entertainment industry for 10 years now, and it wasn't until 2010 that I really figured out that my voice as an individual, not just as an entertainer, mattered. After the oil spill in the Gulf, I sat at home watching over 50,000 gallons of oil spill into the sea every day, and I thought, I have to do something about this. I have to use my platform. I have to figure out a way to be a better activist. And I thought, how can I do it? What can I do? And I decided to look into physical challenges, and I signed up for a half marathon. If we can go, do we have slides? Oh yeah, there's the first one. Um, so I signed up on this website that I'm here to talk to you about, CrowdRise, and started using the platform and said, you know, what is something that I really find challenging? And for me, that was running. I'm not a runner. As you can see by the boot on my foot, I'm not that coordinated either. Um, I broke my toes running from one room into another, so you can imagine me trying to complete a half marathon was <laughs> amusing, to say the least. And this first race, really created a hunger for me in, in sort of the vein of being an activist because it worked. And I realized that I could accomplish something not only that I didn't think was possible, but something that could have a real effect. And I'm just one person. My passion was recognized and really validated by this social media community. And a really big honor for me came when I got a call from CrowdRise and they said, you're really using the platform well. Would you consider joining our team? And it was, it was an epiphany. I'm sure you all, when you reach a goal, it makes you feel so good because you're succeeding at something that matters to you. And, and this, to me, was really succeeding at my greatest passion, not you know, being asked about a trend or a boy or a TV show, but about what mattered to me. So the marathon was the first step. And then if we go to the next one, this was the next really big moment for me. I got a call from someone you'll hear from this weekend, Alexis Jones, who runs a great organization called I Am That Girl, which works on building collaboration versus competition among women. You all know something about collaborating. And Alexis called me and said, hey girl, how would you like to go to the White House? And let me tell you, when you get a phone call and you get invited to the White House, that's it. That is the greatest day. And we took a group of girls and met with Tina Chen, who is the First Lady's Chief of Staff and who runs the Council on Women and Girls. So they basically decide on programs that affect all of us, not only at home, but all around the world. And we went and sat down about really figuring out ways to be a mobile community of women, to be inspiring, to be leaders, and to have conversations that matter, to talk to girls about the fact that their brains matter more than their bodies, that your GPA should be the thing you're most proud of, not who your boyfriend is or your girlfriend is. And so we sat at the White House, Lex and I, she's sitting right there, having this moment of like, oh my god, we're here. <laughs> and it was so thrilling. And so we realized we, we kind of had achieved something at home. So then next, how do you achieve something globally? Someone else that you'll hear from this weekend, my good friend Adam Braun, who's like a brother to me, founded Pencils of Promise. And I traveled, as you can see in this photo, with them to Laos really trying to figure out how to be the best global citizen that I can be. And the story of this that really resonated with me, and I think will resonate with all of you, is that it really begins with a pencil. It begins with the opportunity for education. And I met a little girl at one of these schools, which if we go to the next slide, this is one of the villages that we were in, and we were passing out pencils that day. And in a classroom, a little girl, not much older than a lot of you, had a pencil that was this big, that she was using, I mean, down to where the little metal piece hits before it attaches the eraser. And we passed out new pencils, and she was holding this little pencil up, and holding up the new pencil, and looked at us, and her teacher was explaining that just the ability to continue writing, taking notes, means she gets to stay in school. And that really hit me, you guys, because as I mentioned, I went to an all-girls school that was wonderful. And you all, I'm sure, have incredible opportunities in school here. And to know that we can support that internationally for girls, what that means, recognizing the, the life that is provided by education is 
enormous. The opportunity, because the opportunity provided just by a pencil means especially women in the developing world get to transcend their circumstances. You get to pursue a better job, a higher education, get married later, have less children, provide better for those children when you do. All of this from a pencil. And the power of education, I've learned through global travels, is as valuable as the power of water. I believe the next, this was a bun, oop, no, let's go back, sorry, I, I'm not controlling this and uh, I'm also not giving the best of cues, I suppose. This is from a charity water event. You guys will hear from Scott Harrison about the importance of water as well. And this is an example for me. You guys know I'm an actor. So I have to go to events like this and get my picture taken. And what I realized is I can use my influence to serve organizations that matter, much in the way that all of you do. Now, what I really find valuable about that is that we can all, in our own way, and in our own spheres of influence, redefine what it means to be a rock star. Because you can get your picture taken, or you can be a popular kid, whatever it is, but your value and what you can really promote is that your value, value of girls in general, comes from what you do, what you choose to do with your time, and where you choose to put your passion. And I get to be a flashlight by going to events like this and supporting groups like Charity Water, like I Am That Girl, and like Pencils of Promise. So what do you guys want to highlight? And what I'm hoping is that you can highlight things that are important to you, if we go to the next slide, with a platform like ours. This was a big challenge that we did with Proud Rise. We decided that while competition isn't what we promote per se among people or women, competition and fundraising can be really fun. And in this challenge, myself and a bunch of other people managed to raise well over half a million dollars in three weeks for charities. And what I want you guys to know, <laughs> what I want you guys to know is that the way that I was able to win this challenge was with all of you. I'm sure there's a lot of you in this room who supported this. And the way that you win and the way that you really become effective for a charity is by building a team. I'm really fortunate to be a part of your community. I'm really fortunate to count this room among wonderful groups of supporters. And I know that you guys can do something like this. You don't have to be an actor to have a voice. You can have a CrowdRise page and come up with creative challenges. For example, how many of you in this room, how many of your parents drink coffee every day? Okay. How many of your parents go to Starbucks or Coffee Bean every day? Probably a lot. So let's say your parents spend four bucks a day on coffee. If you were to say to your family, I'll get up an extra 10 minutes early and I'll brew a pot of coffee if you'll give me your $4 a day for a charity that matters to me, that already is $120 a month. So that's one example. You could do a run like I did, you could do a hula contest, you could do anything you're passionate about to try to raise money for your charity. And if we go to the next one, and the one after that, sorry. This is what we're launching for you guys. I've picked a couple of my favorite groups on CrowdRise, and my guess is that since you guys are more computer and social media savvy than I am, because you've grown up with it, you will be rock stars at this. You're gonna hear from some of these speakers who I've mentioned already, and what we're hoping is that we can keep the spirit of this conference alive, and really use your expertise. You guys raised over $10 million last year selling cookies, so you're way better at this than any of us could ever hope to be. And my thought is that if you can do that not being online and having a platform, that if you guys get online, you're going to crush it. So let me show you an example. If we go to the next slide, if you go on and read about those charities, say that you pick Pencils of Promise. If you look in the lower corner there, you can click a button and say join the team, and then you're signed up. And I know that you're all smart and capable and incredible, 
and probably write great emails. So you can send an email out to your friends, your family, and ask people to sponsor you in your race or your Hulu contest. Or you can say, give up coffee for a week and sponsor me that way. Whatever it is, I trust that you will be even more creative than we are. And you can get to tweeting and you can get to Facebooking, which I believe might come after this. Yep, you'll have a project page, and then next, it'll show you how to push it out, share it on any of your social media, and that's kind of it. It's that easy. And I know that you guys will knock our socks off next year when we see just how much money you're raising, be it for Girl Scouts or any other charity that you're passionate about. I know that you guys are incredibly conscious citizens, and I'm very excited to see what you do after this weekend and how you become even more shining examples of global citizens as well. So there's a couple of things I want you to know. Not only is it going to be a lot of fun, we have some prizes and contests that are coming. So if you do follow me on Twitter, lovely, and if you'd like to sign up to, you can, because I'll be tweeting about contests. Two of the big ones we have to announce, Dell Computers has sponsored us, and they're giving us two computers to give away to all of you. So, anyone who donates $26 to anyone's fundraising page by May 10th is going to be entered to win one. And whoever in this room, or whoever you get to sign up, who is the biggest fundraiser with the highest amount raised by that day, is going to win another. There's going to be a lot more contests and a lot more giveaways, and I really hope that that can be the good side of spurning competition and, and getting us all going. And I just really want to reiterate how impressed with all of you I am. I think you're exceptional girls. I think you're setting a wonderful example. And don't forget that you really can. It might seem corny because it's a, it's a quote people use a lot, but I think that Gandhi got it right. You really can be the change that you wish to see in the world, not just talk about it or dream about it, but you can really be a shining example. And you're all doing that every day, the way that you carry yourselves with such grace and with such spirit of service. So hold on to that. Don't lose it and, and keep inspiring me and, and each other. I'm so proud to be a part of your community. given us questions for Sophia via CrowdRise. We have over a hundred questions. So, we're going to try to answer a few, but we're going to start with Suna and Akia, who have questions. Sophia, but you have a lot of questions coming in. <laughs> oh, this is a cute one. What is your favorite Girl Scout cookie? 
they got they, well, you guys renamed them, but they're they're tagalongs now, right? Peanut butter and chocolate, or is that the old name? Is that the name from when I was a kid that none of you have even ever seen? Does that date me? That is my favorite cookie. I wish you sold them all year round. <laughs> Do you want to get a pic of you? <laughs> Did you cover the night with County 2012? Well, I was tweeting about it a lot. I didn't get to do much covering again because I'm walking around in a in a boot. <laughs> I'm again, I'm not coordinated. <laughs> oh, this is a that I really like. They asked you, how did you choose some of these charities you started getting involved with? What made you choose them? Well, I've been really fortunate to attend a, a really wonderful conference, kind of like this one that you're all attending this weekend. Every year, where a lot of great heads of charities come to talk about how best to be effective and what it is they do in the world. So that's how I've come <laughs> in contact with a lot. Oh my! <laughs> Can I dance for you? I wish I could. I mean, I would like bust out my moves like on the Ellen Show, but with this shoe booty, I'm I'm, I'm failing at any and all things requiring movement. <laughs> and let her enjoy them. We're going to thank her for being here. Um, I know that she's also going to get to meet some of the Gold Award winners, so we're excited for that. And now I'm going to give a few more remarks. And let's thank Sophia again. Thanks, girls. Thank you, girls, and thank you, Sophia. And thank you, girls, for sitting so well.